Nearly two years ago, Lenovo blew us away with the Yoga Book, and now they're back with the Yoga Book 2. At least that's where we're calling it. It's also known as the C930. Today, I'm going to give you a quick tour and give you my first impressions. Stay tuned. Right before we get started, let's set a little context. Around two years ago, Lenovo announced the Yoga Book. It was a really imaginative device, and now they're back with the sequel. I'm actually really glad. Not only did they make it, but they improved it in a lot of significant ways. Still, you can think of this as a, an experimental device, a prototype device, a look into the future that they're allowing you to buy now, which means the market for this device is going to be very limited. It's going to be for people who are just really kind of crazy about computers and want to try something new. Now, I should point out this device was originally conceived by Intel, who routinely comes up with new designs for PCs. They take it around to the 90% mark, and then they hope OEMs will pick it up and run with it, and then end up mass producing it. And that's what Lenovo did here. So Lenovo did their own twist here with e-ink and their own hinge, and as well as their software. And of course, they're selling it now, so you can actually go and buy it if you want. That's a really cool thing. So I want to judge this device based on what it's supposed to be and who is it for, and not necessarily as this you know, you're going to go buy this as a mass market PC for your mom and dad, but still, it's really cool. Let's give a quick tour now and show you what it's got. All right, let's start with the overall design here. Slightly larger than the last version, 10.8 inch display versus 10. And it's got a lot of cool features that they did in there. One, you can stick the magnet to the top. Not really practical, but it does hold it there for basic things. You can also do this really cool feature where you knock on top and it opens up the device. Really kind of clever. You can disable that if you don't like it, but I thought it's kind of cool. All right, let's take a look here at the ports. Looking at the right-hand side, you do have a USB Type-C port. And look at that, it's got a little headphone marker because this does not actually have a headphone jack. Welcome to the future, folks. Over to the side here, you do have a power button, which has a nice little grip feel to it so you can easily discern where it is. You also have a nice speaker grill here. Usually you would expect sort of, you know, compromises with speakers on the bottom maybe of this device, but they put it on the side, and considering how thin and light this device is, it's actually pretty good speakers. In fact, you also get Dolby Atmos on board, which... I find it a little bit strange. You can disable it, but, you know, it gives you a lot of new options for audio. Finally, you do have a volume rocker on the side, which is really good if you're going to use this in tablet mode or you just want a physical button to change the volume. Spinning around to the left-hand side, you have another USB Type-C port along with a little LED to let you know it's charging. And you do have a micro SD slot for expanding the memory on board, which you may want to do because this doesn't have a ton of memory, about 128 gigabytes. And in some models, this will be also where the SIM card resides. Don't forget, in Europe, you'll be able to get this with 4G LTE. Unfortunately, in the United States, you can't get that, which is kind of weird. I think this device would be awesome with LTE, but I'll just have to take their word for it. So there you go. Looking on the back, you do get Lenovo's patented watch band hinge, which they're actually retiring in some of the other yoga devices out there, but they're still using it here, and it actually works very well. Now on the bottom, nothing too much going on here. This is a fanless device, so no vents, no nothing. You do get a couple stickers, including that Dolby Atmos certification. Turning to the front of the device, you have a 10.8 inch display that's 2560 by 1600 resolution. That's a significant improvement over the previous version, which is full HD at 10 inches. It's a really nice display, folks. It's one of the better ones I've seen out there. It's very bright, it's very punchy. It's got a, obviously, it's touch support, it has pen support, 4,096 levels of pressure, Wacom EES, which is pretty good for a display like this. It's really good for riding on it. Overall, it's a really nice display that they did not cheap out on. The bezels are okay, too. Like I said, about as wide as my thumb for holding it. You kind of want that. You also do get a nice front-facing camera on here, which is sharper than I would expect for a device of this size and everything. It's actually a very good web camera. It's going to be really good for making conference calls using Skype or whatever. Turning to the bottom, this is where all the magic is. Matching the top display is a 10.8-inch e-ink display. So this is a full HD resolution, so a little bit lower. It is e-ink, and that means you can change it. So as you can see here, we have the standard keyboard, and you do have the mouse pad here, which is built in. What's really neat is it's dynamic. So if I'm using the keyboard, you can see the trackpad goes away. Instead, it's got this little dot here, and I have a nice size space bar. And so what happens is as I'm typing, it's just going to be like that, and I just tap this, and now the trackpad comes back. You have right and left click. Now, if you don't like that feature, you can actually disable it. Just have a small trackpad there as well. So it's really up to you. That is sort of an extra step to do, but it's also more ideal for typing. 
Speaking of typing, there are three modes of feedback on this device. So, and when you press the buttons on here, you can actually see they physically, well, virtually move to represent a physical touch on the keys, which is really clever and something that the Halo keyboard from the previous version couldn't do. It also vibrates and there's different types of vibration on here. So the keys all feel one way for the letters. But if you hit something like the start button, it actually has a different kind of feel on it. So when you're typing, you can actually kind of feel what key does what in case you accidentally hit something. Now, if you don't like the vibration at all, one, you can change the intensity of it or disable it completely. It's totally up to you. There's also audio feedback, so as you're typing, it can make noise. So we combine all three of those. It Well, it gets you pretty close to a typing experience. I don't want to sugarcoat it. It's nowhere near as good as a real keyboard. Probably never will be, at least not for the next few years, but it's a significant improvement over last year's model. Now, one of the cool things about this and being e-ink is you can take notes with it, do other things with it. So they have a built-in note-taking app right into it. Now, it's not going to be as good quality as using the display on top, which I said is Wacom AES. Instead, it's going to be a little bit, you know, slower to use. On the other hand, this gets better battery life. So you can rotate this around and just use it as a notepad. A little bit slower, but it's going to last you a lot longer than using the top screen. And let's be honest, it's kind of clever. I should also mention that this is not in OneNote, it's their own proprietary system. Still, it saves to your documents and you can share them later on. And finally, the other feature this has is it's an e-reader. So it doesn't work with the Microsoft Store yet for e-books. It may later on. Right now, this is a standard PDF reader. That means you just drop files into your documents folder, and they'll show up here, and you can choose them. They just give you basically the entire manual here as an e-book, so you can go read it. And it works pretty well. You know, Like I said, it's sort of like having a Kindle if you're into that. Now, for Windows Hello login, it does have a fingerprint reader built into the chassis. It's actually a pretty good fingerprint reader, although I am having an issue that I've seen across some other Windows devices. That is, when this resumes from deep hibernation, the fingerprint reader doesn't come on. It's just a bug with Windows, and hopefully that will be addressed in a firmware update. All right, so I don't want to really full review this device. I've only had it for a couple days, so I'm still kind of getting used to it, but I can give you some impressions. Let's talk about those specifications first. This has a Core i5 processor. That's a Y series seventh generation, so not quite quite as powerful as your standard Core i5 in an Ultrabook, but it's a pretty good processor actually. Huge improvement over Atom. This processor to give you a frame of reference is sort of like a Core i5 that's sixth generation. That's a real Core i5 processor. It's actually very zippy on this device. It's kind of more than you would expect. You can also get it with an M3 processor, which will save you some money and probably a little bit of battery life too, but I really don't have any complaints considering how thin and light this device is. The performance is very good. Now, what about typing? That's going to be the million dollar question. I'm going to say it's better than expected. It's still not a very good typing experience. But yeah, I can actually bang out some emails on this. If you're a regular touch typist and you just don't have to really look at your hands, it's actually pretty solid. Uh, I wouldn't recommend writing a term paper on this or anything long, but it's sort of better than expected and you kind of get used to it. Now, if you're sitting on a couch in the dark, it's going to be a little of a pain. It's not a backlit keyboard and you know that's going to be kind of a bummer, but Overall, you know, considering what they're trying to do here, I thought it's kind of cool. It still has room to improve, but they're going in the right direction here. But for banging out quick little emails, maybe text messages, or doing other things, it's actually not so bad. Let's talk about some other features here. So you can get this with four gigabytes of RAM and up to 256 gigabytes of storage. The one I have in front of me is 128 gigs. And this is actually kind of interesting. They are using a very good Toshiba SSD in this. So you're getting around 1200 write speeds, which again, is not something you would expect. You expect maybe eMMC type storage on this, but no, there's a full fledged like PCIe NVMe SSD on board here. So you get very good performance. And when you combine that with that Core i5, even though it's a Y series processor, this thing actually, hauls pretty well considering the size of it. Now, if there's going to be an Achilles heel to this device besides the size and keyboard, well, it's going to be battery life. So it has a 38 watt hour battery and it's okay. It's going to get you around maybe six hours. Now they quote eight, eight and a half hours, but it's probably more five or six hours, depending on how bright you're going to have that display. And that's a little bit on the low end and that's because it's using an Intel processor versus ARM, but they're not going to use ARM because Intel kind of developed this device in the first place. And I kind of get that. On the other hand, I don't know if that's necessarily a huge deal considering the size of this device. If you're going to stare at this thing for six hours, well, I actually got to feel bad for you. But obviously, more battery life is always better. You want something to last a couple of days when you don't have to think about it when you go pick it up. So it's going to be an Achilles heel on this device. But at the same time, I'm kind of impressed with everything they jammed into this device. And it's overall not that bad. It will get you through a flight across the United States. 
All right, so I've only spent a few days with this device, so I'll probably do a follow-up review to this, and I really want to take your questions on it, so leave them below if you have them and you're curious about this device, but let's get to some points here. $4,000, it's definitely pretty expensive. Most of you should probably not go out and buy this device, especially if you want to use it as your main laptop, which would be crazy. I do think this device has a role, though, and I think it's a real interesting look into the future. I'm also really happy that Lenovo even released it. They could have just shown this off as a concept device, but they're letting you try it out and buy it yourself. And I think for some people who are early adopters, and who really want to push technology, oh, this device is going to be a lot of fun. The display on this is really nice. It makes watching video on this just a lot of fun. If you're going to take it on an airplane, you can watch movies on it. You can play some light games on it as well. It's also good for just banging out some emails or keeping abreast of what's going on at your job. But the real selling point, of course, is going to be this pen and the e-ink ability for it. Now, I really like the idea of taking notes on this. It's small, it's light, I can fold it in half, I can just walk around, take notes. There's a lot of people who need to do that kind of thing. If you're in meetings or you're interviewing people, well, this is actually kind of critical. And the e-ink aspect is really neat too. Now, I'd love to see Microsoft Store support so I can actually buy books on there and start reading them on here versus just putting PDFs on there. But if I was a student, this is a really cool device to have. If you think about using PDFs and marking them up, well, you can do that on this device and still have something that's light enough to carry around with you. It can be really useful for those who want to study. Still, the cost is pretty prohibitive, but laptops were super expensive 10, 15 years ago too, and now pretty much everybody has those. So I think the price will come down on this later in the future, but for now, this is definitely for early adopters. I'm super glad that Lenovo has it. Now, if you have questions about this device, make sure you leave them below. I'll see if I can do a follow-up review and compare it to other devices. And if you have questions about the performance on it, what it can do, and other aspects, let me know.